Welcome back friends, welcome to another video tutorial from Shomu's Biology and we have been talking about immunology video lectures and in this video tutorial we will be talking about hypersensitivity reactions. There are different types of hypersensitivity reactions present in our immune system. Now first thing is what is hypersensitivity? If you look at the term, it is going to give you a clear idea about what we are talking about. Our immune system is designed in a way so that it can identify between the foreign particle and the self object. Now what happens, there are two types of failure can be possible for this specific feature. You know, sometimes, you know, there are two things as I told you, one is self, another one is non-self. Now our immune system sometimes fails to detect non-self that creates some problems, that is other set of problem. But sometimes the immune system detect self as non-self. So they are pretending that self molecules are non-self type and they start involving all those immune reactions against that self molecules and start destroying our own body cells. That causes some more immune reactions, severe immune reactions which are unwanted in our body, which are not at all necessary in our body. Those extra reactions or hyperness of our immunity is known as hypersensitivity. There are different types of allergic reactions that occur. All those things are belonging to the hypersensitivity. So let's look at the different types of hypersensitivity and their features and the mechanism of developing hypersensitivity in the first place. So let's move on. The first type of hypersensitivity is allergic hypersensitivity or type 1 hypersensitivity. It is allergic. It causes anaphylaxis. So the easy way to remember is think of A, type 1 equals to A. So allergic and anaphylactic. The idea of this type 1 hypersensitivity, it is completely antigen induced. It's, it's, it's immunogen induced. Now this, this is called as the allergen. Okay? This is an allergen induced uh, process of hypersensitivity also causes allergy. Now there are small molecules known as allergen which can interact into our body cells and normally in our body there are different types of antibody present who can fight and bind against specific antigen. Now one of such antibodies immunoglobulin E or IgE, this IgE antibody can pair with and attach with this allergen molecule. Whenever two such consecutive IE molecules attach to one allergen molecule sitting in the surface of a cell known as mast cells, then those mast cells get some signal from this binding of allergen with the ant antibody. That gives a signal to the mast cells. Mast cells are start secreting some chemical factors that can cause some tissue damage. That is known as common reaction of allergy. It includes the anaphylactic reactions like airway constriction and vasodilatation. Type 2 is antibody mediated uh, type hypersensitivity. Uh, it is easy way to remember is B antibody and in this case it is also known as cytotoxic hypersensitivity because in this case cytotoxic cells start overreacting. As cytotoxic cells have the capability of killing other cells, it could be dangerous. Because if cytotoxic cells get overactive, in that case, it start killing our normal body cells, which is not required. The third type is immune complex mediated hypersensitivity. And in that case, our complement system in our body, we have discussed about complement system in our earlier videos, you can watch that. In this case, those complements start fixing based on the presence of some, again, chemical molecules known as allergens. When they start fixing those complement, they start releasing some anaphylactic factors like factors like you know uh, C3A, C5A, all these things are acting as anaphylactic factors. Now as those chemical factors start secreting, neutrophil gets in the direction of those secretion of the chemicals by the process called chemotaxis. And neutrophil are dangerous cells. It can break down other cells. It can harm other cells. So once neutrophil gets super active, it starts doing all the, all the bad works that ultimately destroys our body cells. So this is immune complex mediated because 
in this case complement system is involved and the fourth kind is known as the delayed hypersensitivity so number four easy to remember with delayed that is d so we're talking a b c d like that so delayed hypersensitivity this type of reaction take place in two different stages first stage is the preliminary stage of uh, activating more and more t helper cells in our immune system once such t helper cells are activated in future those t helper cell will activate huge number of macrophage and macrophage are dangerous phagocytic cells once macrophage are activated those macrophage can cause serious harm to our own tissue so in all this respect we see that there are some issues with our own body cells they behave altered way they behave badly and start harming our own body cells that's what hypersensitivity really is now let's look at each of this hypersensitivity in little bit more details start with the type 1 hypersensitivity it starts with the process of anti body mediated hypersensitivity mostly this is also allergen mediated process where there comes an allergen and you know these are cells known as the b cells b cells have uh, antibody in their surface known as the b cell receptor now one such allergen sit and interact with two conjugative antibody that provide some signal inside there now, as they provide some signal inside uh, that's going to activate this b cell and also b cell will engage in interaction with t cells t helper cells so in this crosstalk between b cell and t cell t cell provides some signal to the b cell and b cell gets activated one B cell gets activated by that fashion, this B cell start producing more and more plasma cell, which are modified version of B cells, which uh, contains more cytosolic component and huge mechanism to produce proteins. This plasma cells are antibody producing factories. Once this plasma cell start producing so much antibody and those antibody are IgE or immunoglobulin E type of antibody. Now those IgE start involving the process of hypersensitivity those ige molecules will start to go and they will start to interact on the surface of cells known as mast cells mast cells are granule rich cells because they contain a lot of granules inside which are filled with different chemical components like histamine bradykinin leukotriene b4 c4 all these chemical mediators that cause anaphylaxis that can act on our smooth muscle, blood vessel, mucosal gland, platelets and different regions of our body. Now the idea is such aminoglo immunoglobulin E will be attached to the surface. Now once one allergen again will be bound to two such conjugative immunoglobulin that triggers some signal and downstream signaling event that allows all those vesicles to be fused with the mast cell membrane. Now as the vesicle fuses with the membrane, it starts releasing all the chemical components like histamine, leukotriene, uh, bradykinin, all these chemical components that will ultimately go and it will act on our smooth muscle or, or our mucosal gland and all these regions that cause anaphylactic, anaphylactic reactions. It causes airway constriction, vasodilatation, the typical symptoms of an allergy that we know of. So all these things, the, the basic range of allergy that we talk about, the vast range of allergy that we know of belong to this type 1 hypersensitivity interactions. Now mostly this type of interactions will be involved with uh, you know, anaphylaxis, asthma and atopy. All these things that we know of are based on this type 1 hypersensitivity. Now you could be allergenic to different things, depends on the type of people we are talking about. For example, some may be allergic to pollen, some may be allergic to dander or the animal hair or these things could be allergic. You know all these things, all those things belong to this type 1 hypersensitivity. Now let's move to the type 2 hypersensitivity. In type 2 hypersensitivity, this is the process of antibody mediated hypersensitivity or it's also known as cytotoxic hypersensitivity. Because in this case, we need to, the presence of two such different antibody like immunoglobulin G and mostly immunoglobulin G but rarely immunoglobulin M as well. Both of these antibody can bind to the antigenic cell 
and that cell will be tagged with this immunoglobulin G and immunoglobulin M. Once those cells are tagged with IgG or IgM, that means they are flagged as to destroy. So our own body cells, which are the cytotoxic cells of our immune system or killer cells of our immune system, will recognize that target cell which is coated by this IgG or IgM, it can recognize it, start releasing different chemical factors that will destroy the target cell or this IgG or IgM coated cell. That is the idea of type 2 hypersensitivity. So it's a destruction of self cells not knowing what's going on. Though the self cell is healthy, but still the destruction signal is on and that's a problem, that's a mistake. Normally, we have the process of killing our own body cells if there is any infection in our body. Otherwise, there is no need of killing our own cells, right? So in this case, what happens, though the cell is normal, behaving normally, but still there is some issue with our immune system and this IgG and M is added to the surface of the target normal cell. So other cytotoxic cells start releasing factors to kill it, known as antibody dependent cellular cytotoxicity or ADCC, antibody dependent cellular cytotoxicity. That's the type 2 hypersensitivity. And the example for that is different autoimmune responses. Autoimmunity, that means our own body cells recognizing self cells as pathogens. That's the thing, that's the mistake they are making here. It also causes things like hemolytic anemia, where the target cell is our red blood cell. So what will happen if the, if the red blood cell is the target and there is a cytotoxic killer cell, it start killing the red blood cells, soon we left with very less hemoglobin in our body, that will be anemia. So that's called hemolytic anemia, where the lysis of the red blood cell take place. And thrombocytopenia, these are another example of disease, which are all belonging to type 2 hypersensitivity. Now about type 3 hypersensitivity. Type 3 hypersensitivity is known as immune complex, immune complex mediated hypersensitivity. And in this case, we will see the presence of complement system, complement system involving with the hypersensitivity reaction. And actually, in case of type 3 hypersensitivity, complement system can do two different tasks. It triggers the activity of either activation of neutrophil or the activation of mast cells. Both way, it's going to destroy some tissue and some body cells. What happens actually, let's look at the process of activation. You see here, there are small immune complexes. Immune complex means the complex between antigen and antibody. So here are all immune complexes. Once antigen attached to the antibody, it can form large immune complexes. Now all this immune complex, once the antigen antibody is attached, then there are small fraction of protein that are present in our serum known as the complement. Those protein comes in and complement can be fixed when there is an antigen antibody involved with it. So complement fixation takes place and as a result of that, those proteins are cleaved into different parts A and B while the A parts are released and those A parts act as anaphylotoxin. So all these complement portions, they are known as C proteins. So C3A, C4A, C5A, which are the counterpart of all those uh, C proteins are fragmented and all of them act as chemical signaling messenger. So those chemical signaling molecules can activate mast cells or they can also activate this neutrophil cells, not actually activate, but actually the presence of this C3A, C3, C5A in the environment cause neutrophils uh, to work and come down to the location of the release because this process is known as chemotaxis. By the means of chemotaxis, this neutrophil can easily uh, transfer from the blood vessel to the tissue towards the gradient of this uh, secretion of C3A, C5A. So by the release of this C3A, C5 and all these complement fractions, neutrophil can come, mast cells start releasing granules. So in a sense, a huge mass of chemical factors start releasing in our body. 
that is not at all required in that time because no pathogen is taken in tree it's just our own body cells and they are behaving very badly they are getting hyper sensitive about very very simple stuff so that is another mode of hypersensitivity known as type 3 hypersensitivity and the example for that is rheumatoid arthritis where there is a self destruction of different muscle tissue and also serum sickness is another example of that that means if you somehow take blood or serum somehow from any other individual to our body if you transfer the blood into our body from any other donor it might happen that serum contains this this so many different types of uh, complements which are unique to our body then they can start the process of this hypersensitive reactions guessing those materials as foreign so that is what uh, we know as a scenario of type 3 hypersensitivity let's move to the last or final kind that is type 4 hypersensitivity type 4 hypersensitivity is also known as delayed hypersensitivity delayed hypersensitivity why because this hypersensitivity reaction don't take place very rapidly like the unlike the other ones because type 1 type 2 type 3 those reactions will take place very fast whenever you transfer any allergen or any serum let's say into a patient's body the reaction may take place but type 4 hypersensitivity requires some incubation time to develop almost like first one to two week there is no symptoms of any hypersensitivity reactions but after that the reactions start to occur when your body come in touch with the same type of allergen or antigen uh, within very limited period of time so there are two different phases of this type 4 or delayed hypersensitivity first phase is known as sensitization phase when let's say there is a presence of bacteria which is engulfed by macrophage or any other antigen presenting cell and start uh, breaking down the fragments of the bacteria and they will showcase the fragment of that antigen to the rest of the immune system cells with the help of major histocompatibility complex 2 or MHC2 so that immune cells can get activated and alerted. So T helper cells sense the presence of that antigen with the help of T cell receptor and they get self activated producing more and more T helper 1 cells. That is a part of the sensitization reaction. Now comes the second part known as the effector phase. In this effector reaction, once these T helper cells are active, now much of those T helper cell can go and activate so many macrophages because a huge pool of T helper cells are getting activated due to the presence of that fragment of antigen that they encountered earlier. So now a pool of T helper cells are active, they will go and further activate huge number of macrophages in our body. So all those macrophages will now be very hyperactive they start causing very harm, they start degrading cells, they start engulfing cells because macrophages are phagocytic cells. They can engulf cells inside, break them down, destroy them. So macrophages start releasing so many factors and chemical modifications uh, will take place by them. And so many uh, chemokine signaling like interleukin 2, interleukin 3 signaling process are going on, tumor necrosis factor is released, uh, NF kappa B signaling is going on. So ultimately it's a huge uh, like uh, like a war started in our body which is not at all required let's say that this, the pathogen that enters is not that harmful that's why we call it as a hypersensitivity now remember one thing if in all this case we are not talking about very very proper pathogen we are not talking about proper antigen or proper pathogen because if a proper antigen enters or a pathogen enters our body should react in a better way that is good for saving us but this case, these are problem because body is reacting unnecessarily. It's not required for our body to react against some small like molecule called allergen. Let's say a pollen, pollen will not make any harm to us. Or let's say a dander will not make a harm to us. Dust will not make harms to us much. Uh, it will do other kind of harm, but not, not dangerous harm like the other bacteria or viruses, pathogens. So, if, path, if they make the same response against the pathogen, that won't be considered as hypersensitivity. It is considered as hypersensitivity because they, they make this against our self-cell. They fail to recognize between the self and non-cell. Now, the example of type 4 hypersensitivity is a TB test. 
the the whole TB test is based on the idea of this type 4 hypersensitivity. We just uh, cross uh, provide that same antigen to check whether our body reacts again, against it or not. And also different kind of transplant reactions uh, occur during the donor uh, like exchange in different organs or organ transplantation or tissue transplantation between the individual. Uh, most of them resulted in like this type 4 hypersensitivity from our body side. Okay. So that is all about the different types of hypersensitivity. I hope you understand the overall view of hypersensitivity and why it takes place and the different examples. So if you like this video, please hit the like button, share this video with your friends and definitely subscribe to my channel to get more, more and more videos like that. Thank you.